crimes charged and pleaded. The first count of the indictment charges the offense of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. On November 17, 2021, our lives changed forever. Embraced and included within the offense are the lesser included offenses, facilitation to wit, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. A son, a father, a brother, a friend, a businessman, a music artist, a philanthropist, and life partner are all among just some of the titles that my brother Adolph Robert Thornton Jr. held. The second count of the indictment charges the offense of first degree murder. Embraced and included within the offense are the lesser included offenses of second degree murder, facilitation to wit first degree murder, facilitation to wit second degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, aggravated assault, Facilitation to wit voluntary manslaughter, facilitation to wit aggravated assault, simple assault, facilitation to wit simple assault. I want to say thank you to the jury for their service and decision in this case to bring us one step closer to justice for our family, friends, supporters, and the community that has supported us during this time. Third count of the indictment charges the offense convicted felon in possession of a firearm. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder as charged in count one of the indictment. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in count two of the indictment. And we, the jury, find the defendant guilty of convicted felon in possession of a firearm as charged in count three of the indictment. Hip hop is the only genre of music where beef on wax converts to real life beef in the streets, ultimately ending up with bloodshed and murder. What starts out as a war of words quickly escalates to gun violence. The rest is history. A study conducted showed that murder was the cause of 51.5% of deaths of all American hip hop artists. Many of these artists who had been murdered had not seen life past the age of 30, being that their lives were taken at such a young age. More often than not, retaliatory killings have followed most of these murders. It's no secret that violent crime in Memphis, Tennessee has been on a steady increase over the past 10 years, with some crimes breaking records. Alert here at home, Memphis police put out this surveillance photo showing a drive-by shooter. The man armed with a rifle shot and wounded three juveniles Saturday. This happened on Dietrich Avenue near Baltimore Street in Orange Mound. Anyone who can help police identify the shooter is asked to call Crime Stoppers. In 2023, Memphis saw a record-breaking number of homicides. The murder rate in Shelby County increased by 50% in 2023. Memphis leaders are battling the crime that has been plaguing our city, but the latest numbers released by Memphis police show just how dire the situation is. Our WREG's Ashley Paul spoke with city leaders about the drastic increase we've seen over the last year. She joins us now live outside MPD with the latest. Ashley? Steph, well, according to Memphis police, there have been 91 more homicides this year compared to last year at this time. And as crime continues to go up, people continue to be fed up. We have to do better as a community. We have to stop the senseless acts of violence that continue to plague the city of Memphis. Memphis police officer Chris Williams pleading with the community today to stop the violence. After working the scene of the 352nd homicide in the city so far this year. We're tired of it. This community is tired of it. We have to do better. According to the latest numbers by the Memphis Police Department this year, we have seen almost 100 more homicides than last year at this time. 352 this year compared to 261 last year. City Councilman Dr. Jeff Warren says it's heartbreaking, but not shocking. I shoot you, okay, I, I kill you, then your brothers kill two of my siblings or relatives. And then my relatives kill four of yours. Okay, so you have that exponential growth in violence where people have a retaliatory thought process 
And, you know, that's not going to work in society. Dr. Warren says city leaders are working to launch and improve crime intervention programs such as 901 Block Squad and GVIP. But he says it's going to take a collaborative effort that includes state leaders. Governor Bill Lee says the state is there to help Memphis in any way they can. We've added additional troopers that would relieve some of the pressure on the Memphis Police Department to allow them to be more focused on fighting crime while our highway patrolmen are more focused on what's happening on the roads. And Dr. Warren says the city will take all the help they can get with hopes of a brighter future for Memphis. So you're optimistic about turning this around? Yeah, you know, I have to be. Now, for more information on crime intervention programs in the city, you can visit our website, WREG.com. Historically, North and South Memphis have always had their differences. Gangs, guns, and violence have led to blood spilling into the streets of Memphis, which brings us to our story. A heavily guarded funeral service was held on Wednesday, January 31st of 2024 in Memphis, Tennessee for Anthony Mims, aka Big Jook, the older brother of Memphis rapper and CMG record label head honcho Mario Yogati Mim. Snipers, helicopters, and a massive police presence. All for the funeral of Yogati's big brother, Big Juke. That's what people saw in Hickory Hill today outside of New Direction Christian Church. That's why MPD wanted to be prepared. They told us they put so much manpower in purpose there today. Fox 13's Walter Murphy was in Hickory Hill. He joins us live. Mark, Walter, it wasn't just MPD. There was private security there working the funeral as well, you found out. Yeah, that's right, Daryl. There were private security officers there too, but the scene was so big that people that I talked to thought that it was just a large crime scene. Now, I want to get straight to that video from this afternoon. You could see there were dozens of Memphis Police Department squad cars in parking lots for blocks. There were even snipers on the church where the funeral was taking place. There was even a helicopter casing the church from the sky. Now, it was all out of an abundance of caution. That's according to the Memphis Police Department, who told Fox 13 that the high profile nature of the funeral and the high profile way the big jug lost his life earlier this month warranted all of this. At the age of 47, Big Jook was shot and killed on January the 13th outside a Hickory Hill area restaurant where he had attended a repast following the funeral of a family member. Sources close to the family of rapper Yo Gotti confirmed the man killed outside a Hickory Hill event center is Gotti's brother. Memphis police identified him as 47-year-old Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Mims was shot in the parking lot of Pernon's restaurant and event center. Another man who was shot is still alive but in the hospital. Tonight, police are looking for a white Ford Explorer SUV in connection with the shooting. It has dark tinted windows and black wheels. A witness told police they saw suspects in the SUV speeding away and surveillance video also shows this. If you recognize this vehicle or have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Police released surveillance footage of the vehicle they believe was involved in the shooting but did not publicly identify any suspects. Due to the heated war that was spilling blood onto the streets of Memphis, the planning for Juke's funeral services at New Direction Christian Church in Hickory Hill were kept tightly under wraps. The Memphis Police Department monitored Juke's funeral service in a military type support capacity. It's no secret that Gotti was on high alert, triggering him to hire private security detail of approximately 25 armed guards to cover the funeral services inside the church and on the exterior, including the roof of the building. Anthony Mims, aka Big Juck, death came just hours after his final social media post. In it was a photo of Juck accompanied by the caption they don't want to face you they want to snake you stay alert to stay alive watch your back at all times on january the 13th the following day a memphis police department officer was in the area of 6385 winchester road around 4 15 p.m when he heard gunshots the officer went to the location and found two victims with multiple gunshot wounds both for whom were transported to the hospital juke was identified as the victim who was pronounced deceased at the hospital the second male victim was reported in stable condition
Back to that story we told you about off the top of the broadcast, a deadly shooting in Hickory Hill with connections to Memphis rapper Yo Gotti. Fox 13's Lakia Scott joins us live tonight from St. Francis Hospital. That's where the victims were taken. Lakia, what were you able to find out? Good evening to you. Good evening, Daniel. Well, at least five police sources have confirmed with Fox 13 that the person killed is Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Now, Big Jook is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. The MPD stated the officer discovered Jook in a vehicle outside Paragon's restaurant in Event Center. Jook had attended a repast there following the funeral of his relative, Eric Bovine. Unbeknownst to many, Eric Bovon was a well-known Memphis kingpin in the 80s and head of the Vauban family. He was also a former partner of the aunt of Yogati in Big Jook, died on December 31st at the age of 63. In a press conference held on January the 13th, MPD Deputy Chief Paul Wright said police were analyzing video but did not have a suspect identified at the time. Chief Wright said it was also not clear if there were multiple shooters. On January the 14th, police confirmed that suspects in a white SUV were believed to be responsible for the shooting. MPD released images captured on surveillance video of the vehicle, a white Ford Explorer with black wheels and dark tinted windows. Since releasing the images of the vehicle, Memphis police would not give further updates on the case. I was Big Jook killed and who murdered him, you may ask? On November the 17th of 2021, Adolph Thornton, aka Young Dolph, was shot and killed. Dolph's murder was the result of an ongoing war between Gotti, CMG Camp, and Dolph's paper route empire organization. The roots of the Dolph Gotti feud began more than a decade ago in 2014, and Dolph was just emerging as a mixtape artist on the scene. The beef would ultimately end with Dolph losing his life at the hands of gunmen who were paid off by Big Jug. Although the streets of Memphis already knew what had went down, the rest of the world would not learn the intimate details until September the 24th of 2024 when one of Dolph's accused killers was testified during trial. It's an obvious no-brainer that the murder of Big Jug was indeed associated with the murder of Young Dolph. While most social media onlookers point the finger at PRE, something deeper, darker, and more sinister was brewing in the streets of Memphis. Contrary to popular belief, the streets of Memphis are saying that nobody from Dolph Circle had anything to do with Jug's murder. Instead, the streets would refute those rumors, claiming that crash outs from South Memphis slid on Big Jug for the get back. After it all, Dolph's sister will finally speak out on his murder. On November 17, 2021, our lives changed forever. <clears throat> a son, a father, a brother, a friend, a businessman, a music artist, a philanthropist, and life partner are all among just some of the titles that my brother Adolph Robert Thornton Jr. held. Titles that have now left a missing piece in the lives of so many. I want to say thank you to the jury for their service and decision in this case to bring us one step closer to justice for our family, friends, supporters, and the community that has supported us during this time. Thank you to Judge Mitchell, Shelby County District Attorney's Office, including Paul Hangerman and his team, the MPD, U.S. Marshals, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, and other investigators and staff that assisted us with this investigation and case, ensuring that those responsible for this crime and involved with this crime have, have and will be brought to justice for their actions. We realize this act of violence has impacted so many outside of our family and friends. Your outpouring of love and support throughout this process does not go unnoticed. We ask that instead of focusing on those who committed this crime, you focus on the man that Adolph Robert Thornton was. Regardless of the name that you may know him as, such as Adolph, Dolph, or Young Dolph, we ask you to remember the man who enjoyed being a father and spending time with his family. We ask that you remember the man who enjoyed giving opportunities to those 
who are often overlooked and counted out. We ask that you remember the man who enjoyed giving back to others and being an inspiration to those who come from less than ideal backgrounds and knowing that they are seen and can change their outcomes and the lives of others by doing something positive. We will continue to heal and keep Adolf's legacy alive. We ask that the public and the media continue to keep our family in their prayers, as well as continue to respect our privacy uh, during this time and the next steps of the judicial process as justice is served for all, all those involved for our loved ones. Thank you.